And now for our dinosaur of the day, Archaeopteryx, which was a request from Garrett via Facebook. So thanks, Garrett. You're welcome. Not this, not you, Garrett. <laughs> Different Garrett. <laughs> the joke never gets old. I Sp- hope this Garrett keeps requesting things. <laughs> Spells his name differently. But that doesn't, you can't tell on a podcast. I guess. <laughs> anyway, Archaeopteryx is sometimes referred to its German name, Irvigel, which means original bird or first bird. And the name Archaeopteryx means ancient feather or ancient wing. It was a bird-like dinosaur, transitional between non-avian feathered dinosaurs and modern birds. And for a long time, between the late 19th century and early 21st century, it was thought to be the oldest known bird. And now that title may belong to others, such as Anchiornis, Chiatingia, and Oronis. The type species is Archaeopteryx lithographica. And there's two main species, so Archaeopteryx lithographica and Archaeopteryx Simensi. This is based on a review of all specimens in 2007, though there have been dozens of species names published. Archaeopteryx lived in the late Jurassic in what is now Germany, and was named in 1861 based on a single feather, and then later that year the first complete specimen was announced, or nearly complete. So 12 specimens have been found, all near Solnhofen, Germany, and most of them have impressions of feathers. These are advanced flight feathers, which shows that feathers began evolving before the late Jurassic. Yeah, which if you think about it, is pretty early in dinosaur evolution, considering it was the late Triassic when things really started going, that by like early Jurassic, you already had complex feathers. It's kind of nuts. Yeah. So Hermann von Mayer described the single feather that was found in 1860 to 1861, and that feather is now at the Humboldt Museum for Naturkunde in Berlin. However, that feather may actually belong to another species, since it looks a bit different from other specimens. The first Archaeopteryx skeleton is known as the London specimen and was found in 1861 in Germany and given to local physician Karl Haberlein in return for medical services. Which I can't imagine that working today. (laughs) Yeah, I wouldn't give up. Well, I guess it depends what kind of medical service you needed. Yeah. So he (laughs) ended up selling it for 700 pounds to the Natural History Museum in London, where it still is today. I got it for a steal. Oh, in 1861? Sure. Mm -hmm. Although I guess didn't a pound used to mean like an actual pound of silver? (laughs) I don't know if if they were still in the silver standard in 1861. But 700 he pounds is still definitely a lot. made a pretty penny off of it. Yeah. <laughs> so Richard Owen described it as Archaeopteryx macrura in 1863. And this one's missing most of its head and neck. And said that it might not be the same species as the feather. And it became a synonym in 1951 when Gavin De Beer treated the London specimen, previously named Archaeopteryx macrura, as the holotype, instead of the one with just the feather. And Swinton backed him up in 1960. In 2007, two groups of scientists petitioned the ICZN that the London specimen be the holotype or neotype so that all species keep the Archaeopteryx name, since the original feather seems to have different sizes and proportions and may belong to another theropod where only the feather is known. And after four years, the London specimen was designated the neotype in 2011. Hooray! When the ICZN ruled in favor of the neotype, they suppressed alternative names for Archaeopteryx, so those became synonyms. So some scientists think all specimens belong to Archaeopteryx lithographica. Uh, There are some differences, but some think it's because of different ages of the specimens instead of diversity. Sounds familiar. Yep. Jacob Niemeyer discovered the Berlin specimen in 1874 or 1875 and then sold the fossil to buy a cow in 1876 to Johann Dorr, an innkeeper, who then sold it to Ernst Otto Haberlin, the son of Karl Haberlin. There's some pretty funny transactions going on with Archaeopteryx specimens. (laughs) It went on sale between 1877 and 1881, and the Humboldt Museum for Naturkum bought it for 20,000 gold mark. It's the most complete specimen and was described in 1884 by Wilhelm Dames and it was the first one found with a complete head. And Dames named it a new species, Archaeopteryx simensi, in 1897 and it's often seen as a synonym of Archaeopteryx lithographica though several recent studies have found it to be a distinct species. There's also the Maxburg specimen which is just a torso and it was found in 1956 and described by Florian Heller in 1959, and it's missing a head and tail and 
It once was on exhibit at Maxburg Museum in Solnhofen, but it's now missing. Edward Optich owned it and loaned it to the museum until 1974, and then when he died in 1991, it was found to be missing, either stolen or sold. Hmm. There's also the Harlem specimen, also known as the Taylor specimen, and it was found in 1855, and Mayer described it as Pterodactylus crassipis in 1857, but then John Ostrom reclassified it in 1970. It was the first archaeopteryx specimen found, technically, but it was incorrectly classified. So now it's at the Taylor's Museum in the Netherlands, and it consists of only limb bones, cervical vertebrae, and ribs. There's also the Eichstatt specimen, found in 1951, and Peter Vellenhofer described it in 1974, and it's now at the Jura Museum in Germany. And it may possibly be a different genus, as Juraterix recurva, or a different species, Archaeopteryx recurva. Next is the Solnhofen specimen, which was found in the 1970s, and Peter Vellhofer described it in 1988. Originally, it was classified as Compsognathus. It's the largest specimen known and may be a different genus, Vellhoforia grandis. Yeah, I like that mix-up because it's a really good way to explain how Archaeopteryx and how dinosaurs went from land creatures to flying creatures that just looking at this Archaeopteryx slightly differently could look like a Compsognathus, which is just a little, you know, carnivorous, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like a little chicken kind of looking thing yeah. without wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Archaeopteryx has an interesting history and pretty complex. Yeah. There is also a Munich specimen that was found in 1992 and. Peter Wellhofer described it in 1993. It's at the Paleontologist Museum in Munich, and only the front of the face is missing. So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Then there's the dating specimen found in 1990, and it was on display at the Munich Mineral Show in 2009. It may be a new species since it was found in a limestone bed a few hundred thousand years younger than other specimens. The Burgermeister Mueller specimen that was found in 2000 is known as the, quote, chicken wing <laughs> because it's a fragment of a single wing. That's pretty weak. Funny name, though. Yeah. <laughs> and there's the Thermopolis specimen, which was described in 2005 and donated to the Wyoming Dinosaur Center in Thermopolis, Wyoming. And it shows Archaeopteryx did not have a reversed toe, which birds have, so it would not have been easy to perch on branches and may have had a more terrestrial or trunk climbing lifestyle, which is evidence of theropod ancestry. Gregory Paul said he found evidence of a hyperextensible second toe in 1988, but this wasn't widely accepted until the Thermopolis specimen, which was named Archaeopteryx simensi in 2007. The 11th Archaeopteryx specimen doesn't yet have a name, but was announced in 2011 and described in 2014, and it's privately owned. And there was a 12th specimen found in 2010 and announced in 2014, though that hasn't yet been formally described. Hmm. So Archaeopteryx is considered to be a link between birds and non-avian dinosaurs. The type specimen was found two years after Charles Darwin published On the Origin of Species and seemed to confirm Darwin's theories and be evidence for the origin of birds. Coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> or a grand conspiracy? I don't know. <laughs> so... Darwin wrote, quote, the fossil bird with the long tail and fingers to its wings is by far the greatest fossil of recent times, end quote. Johann Andreas Wagner, who was an anti-evolutionist, proposed in the 1860s that the name Archaeopteryx should be Gryphosaurus problematicus, which means problematic griffin lizard, <laughs> because he thought that Darwin and others would use the name Archaeopteryx, quote, as justification of their strange views upon the transition of animals, <laughs> That they did. <laughs> and then in 1868, Thomas Huxley said that Archaeopteryx was an evolutionary link between birds and dinosaurs. Which reminds me of an SVP presentation that went through all of the science and technology that we used all to eventually find out that Thomas Huxley was right. Yep. About some of his theories. <laughs> it's always good to confirm things. But yeah. A hundred and, what is that, 150 years later, still... Standing up to science, it's pretty good. Yeah. People forgot about what Huxley said, though, with Gerhard Heilmann's The Origin of Birds in 1926, which said Thecodonts were the ancestors of birds, and they're now considered obsolete taxonomic grouping. 
John Ostrom, following Huxley from back in 1968, argued in the 1970s that birds evolved from dinosaurs and that Archaeopteryx was similar to Dromaeosaurids. And Ostrom brought back the idea of the link between birds and dinosaurs when he described Anonychus in 1969. And in 1970, he analyzed Pterodactylus crisippes and renamed it Archaeopteryx, which is the Harlem specimen. And he saw the relationship between Deinonychus and Archaeopteryx and started what's known as now the dinosaur renaissance. Archaeopteryx feathers were similar to modern-day bird feathers, and Archaeopteryx may have been diurnal like most modern birds, but, as mentioned before, did not have a reverse toe like birds, according to a 2005 study. It probably wasn't the first ancestor of birds. It's not a true ancestor of modern birds, but a close relative of that ancestor. Still, it's often used as a model. In 2011, the discovery of Xiaotingia, a close relative, led to suggesting Archaeopteryx was a Deinonychosaur instead of an avialan, and not a bird. But a more thorough analysis soon after found Archaeopteryx to be at the base of avialae and Xiaotingia to be a basal dromaeosaurid or trudontid, though the authors of that study said that there's still uncertainties. In 2012, Center, Turner, McAvicki, and Norrell found that Archaeopteryx was more closely related to modern birds than Dromaeosaurids and Trudontids. But in 2013, Godefroy found Archaeopteryx to be more closely related to Dromaeosaurids and Trudontids, based on the description of Eocenoteryx, Brevipenna. In 2013, Anglin and Nova said that Archaeopteryx and the possibly synonymous Vanhoferia were the basalmost avialans. So, a lot of back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Archaeopteryx had feathers and the feathers may have been used for insulation or possibly flight. Some feather traces in the Berlin specimen are similar to Cenosauroteryx, which may have looked more like fur than feathers in life, though their microscopic structure is different. There's no feathers that have been found on the upper neck and head, though that may be just because of the way Archaeopteryx specimens have been preserved. The feathers on the neck and head may have come loose when the body rubbed against the seabed before it was buried, or the neck and head was mostly underwater when it floated to the surface. It's, Archaeopteryx has been found in marine sediments, so the skin may have softened and then the feathers may have come loose. In 1985, Fred Hoyle, Lee Spetner, and others claimed that the feathers of the Berlin and London specimens were forged based on misinterpreting the fossils and not knowing the process of lithification. They also said other Archaeopteryx specimens did not have feathers, which was also incorrect. <laughs> and they said that the motives for the forgery were because Richard Owen wanted to support Darwin's theory of evolution, which is not likely because of Owen's own views. <laughs> the other possibility is that Owen wanted to discredit Darwin by setting a trap for him, but Owen actually wrote a detailed paper on the London specimen, so this is also not likely. Ryan, Carney, and colleagues did a color study of Archaeopteryx in 2011 using X-ray analysis and detected the structure of melanosomes in the single feather specimen that was described in 1861. They then compared it to 87 modern bird species and found that it was probably the color black. This doesn't mean Archaeopteryx was completely black, but the black may have just partly covered the primary feathers on the wings. Yeah, and since that feather may or may not be Archaeopteryx. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. <laughs> So Archaeopteryx may have had complex colors or iridescent patterns based on basal birds and theropods. A study in 2013 further analyzed the feathers and found it may have had dark and light-colored feathers, and the tips of the flight feathers would have been mostly black, though later this was found to be incorrect, and that the single feather specimen was black with an even darker tip. Archaeopteryx flight feathers were asymmetrical and it had broad tail feathers, which means its feathers could give it lift, but it's not clear if Archaeopteryx flapped or glided. Philip Center in 2006 found that Archaeopteryx could not flap, but may have, quote, used a downstroke only flap assisted gliding technique. In, Interesting. Yeah. In 2010, Robert Nudds and Gareth Dyk analyzed the primary feathers of Confucius Ornus and Archaeopteryx and found they couldn't flap in flight, but Phil Curry and Louis Chiappi disagreed. Curry said they could probably fly to some extent since they were found in what was marine or lake sediments, so they could have flown over deep water. Gregory Paul also disagreed and said that Nuds and Dyke overestimated the mass of Confucius Ornia and Archaeopteryx, but Nud and Dyke stood by their conclusions. One possibility is they didn't truly fly, but instead their wings gave them extra lift while running over water, like the basilisk lizard. That'd be weird. 
That'd be pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Little Compsignathus looking thing with feathers running across a river. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So flightless birds tend to have symmetrical feathers, and Archaeopteryx feathers were asymmetrical, though some flightless birds have asymmetrical feathers as well. In 2004, scientists did a detailed CT scan of an Archaeopteryx brain case and found it was larger than most dinosaurs and was big enough to fly. And it had good vision, hearing, and muscle coordination, as well as an inner ear structure that was more similar to modern birds than to non-avian reptiles. Archaeopteryx did not have a bony breastplate, so it was not a strong flyer, though its flight muscles may have attached to the wishbone, coracoids, or sternum. Archaeopteryx had relatively large wings, so it would have been slow and not had a big turning radius. It also had hind wings that may have helped it be more mobile and fly through trees and brush. Some scientists think that Archaeopteryx was a semi-arboreal animal that climbed, based on the trees down hypothesis by Marsh, that birds evolved from tree-dwelling gliders. Other scientists think Archaeopteryx ran quickly on the ground, based on the ground-up hypothesis by Samuel Wendell Williston, that birds evolved from flight by running. And that's that wing-assisted incline running hypothesis. Yeah. You can run up steep things and develop wings that way. And others think that Archaeopteryx lived in the trees and on the ground, though it didn't seem to have any features to specialize in running or perching. Hmm. Mystery. <laughs> in 2002... Elzanowski said Archaeopteryx may have used its wings to get away from predators and glided with some downstrokes to get to higher trees or go further by gliding down from cliffs or trees. Archaeopteryx possibly lived on islands surrounded by shallow seas and lagoons with some cycads and conifers, not many tall trees, but the plants may have been large enough for gliding from. Where Archaeopteryx specimens were found did not have many trees when Archaeopteryx lived, so they may not have climbed large trees, though that doesn't mean that they didn't have an arboreal lifestyle, because maybe they lived in low shrubs. Archaeopteryx is similar to dromaeosaurids and trudontids. They had sharp teeth, three fingers with claws, a long bony tail, feathers, and a killing claw on their second toes, which it would keep off the ground when running. They probably hunted small prey using jaws or claws, they're about the size of a raven with a long tail, and they grew to be about 1 foot 8 inches or half a meter long. Based on a 2009 study, Archaeopteryx took 2 years and 8 months to grow to adult size, which is slow growth compared to other primitive birds. Yeah, and slow compared to modern birds, too. Mm -hmm. In 2009, Erickson, Norrell, Jong, and others estimate that Archaeopteryx grew slowly compared to modern birds, assuming all known Archaeopteryx specimens were juveniles. If true, this would be similar to the kiwi bird, and Archaeopteryx and kiwis may have similar basal metabolic rates. That's uh, Kiwis have been popping up more and more in our <laughs> discussions. They're great. I, I like them. I can't think of any bird that's less like the traditional view of a dinosaur than a kiwi bird. <laughs> <laughs> so kiwi birds could take apparently five years to reach maturity. What are they maturing into? They're just this armless thing with a beak. They got like, stuff going on. They huh? get more <laughs> pear-shaped <laughs> as they grow up. I don't know. Anyway, Archaeopteryx is in the game arc, and in that game it often flees when there's conflict. You can also see Archaeopteryx in the 2009 film Ice Age 3 Dawn of the Dinosaurs. And in 2001, a Swiss power glider was named the... Ripper Archaeopteryx. The main belt asteroid found in 1991 was named 9860 Archaeopteryx. There's also an outdoor clothing and sporting goods brand called Archaeopteryx. And the this is, I think, the funniest one. So there's a play from 1897, Alfred Jerry's play, and it's called Ubu Kaku O Archaeopteryx, which is Ubu Kakolded or the Archaeopteryx, and it features Archaeopteryx as a character. So it's this nonsensical avant-garde comedy where the wife of the protagonist gives birth to an Archaeopteryx offstage. <laughs> That's, that is avant-garde. Yep. So Archaeopteryx is classified as Archaeopteryridae, and that is a group of Manoraptoran dinosaurs that lived in the Jurassic. It only contains Archaeopteryx. And Max Furbringer named the order... Archaeoptera giforms in 1888 to contain the family Archaeopteridae and the genus Archaeopteryx. Just in case. 
Yes. Somebody wants to talk about the family. 